Good morning and welcome to the United Church of Hayworth. We're glad that you're joining us online. We have friends who have joined us here in the sanctuary as well. If you're joining us online, please let us know, say hello, and we would appreciate that very, very much. We pray that this is a day that all of us draw closer to Christ because we've been here. Our call to worship today is Psalm 118, verses 14 through 20. This is up on the screen, and we will read it responsively. I'll be the L for leader, and you be the P for people. The Lord is my strength and my power. The Lord has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. Right. Please prepare yourselves for our praise songs. Our team is coming up forward. We're going to invite you to stand in body or in spirit today as we get ready to do this. Okay, uh, before we do that, just sit down again and say. <laughs> what? 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 Right. So, what I want to do is, uh, we, we, before we actually start, we're going to sing just like the first verse and chorus of the new song. It's really, really easy to pick up, but I want you just to hear it a little bit, and then you can also decide if it's an Irish jig or whether it's <laughs> whatever. It's kind of, but it's kind of a fun song, and, and there's one line in it that has been hitting me all week, which is the last line of the, of the, of the, the sort of the chorus thing, and it says, I stand in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so every day I've been sitting there, you know, I'm sitting at home, and all of a sudden I'm singing, I stand... <laughs> I got to get a new song in my brain. After a while, it drives you mad. Anyway, this is how it goes. So we'll sing this first, and then we'll get back and we'll get into the praise time, okay? There is one gospel on which I stand for all eternity. It is my story, my father's plan. The song has rescued me. Oh, what a gospel, oh, what a peace. My highest joy and my deepest need, now and forever He is my light. I stand in the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, so that's really easy, isn't it? So instead of listening when we get to that song, sing. <laughs> okay, and you can wave your palm branches around as well, you know, you can do that and put your hands in the air and wave to I was thinking the other day, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into this in a minute. <laughs> you, you know, I was watching a te television program the other day, I was watching something, and, and there was this criminal who came up to this guy and he stuck a gun on him. In. And guess what the guy did who got the gun stuck? What do you think he did? Raise his hand. Why? Oh, <laughs> I surrender. Hmm. Yeah, just a thought anyway. All right, here we go. Let's stand. Let's stand as you're able. Praise is rising. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you, we long for you, and when we see you, we find strength to face the day, in your presence all our fears are washed away, washed away, oh Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. 
we turn to you in your kingdom broken lives of me do you make us new cause when we see you we find strength to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away washed away Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Amen. Here we go. There is one gospel on which I stand. It is my story, my father's plan, the Son has rescued me. Oh, what a gospel, oh, what a peace, my highest joy and my deepest need. Now and forever he is my light, I stand in the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is one gospel to which I cling, all else I count as lost. For there were justice and mercy me, he saved me on the cross. No more I boast in what I can bring, no more I carry the weight of sin. For he has brought me from death to life. I stand in the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is one gospel where hope is found, the empty tomb still speaks. For death could not keep my Savior down, he lives and I am free. Now on my Savior I fix my eyes, my life is his and his hope is mine, for he has promised I too will rise. I stand in the gospel of Jesus Christ. <coughs> and in this gospel the church is one, we do not walk alone. We have his spirit as we press on a safely home. And when in glory still I will sing of this old story that rescued me. Praise to my Savior, a King of life. I stand in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when in glory still I will sing of this old story that rescued me. Praise to my Savior, the King of life. I stand in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to my Savior, the King of life. I stand in the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
I stand in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Fine song it was. Okay. So did we decide the Irish will speak Chinese? I, I, I know what I've decided, but <laughs> the congregation will give me more insight, I'm sure. Our first lesson is extraordinarily short today. Page 884 in the Bible. Normally I would say the front half of the book, but this is almost dead center. 884, this is only one verse, you're going to hear it again in the gospel reading. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, and this is what it says. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey the prophecy for today. Amen. Boys and girls, and those of you who are young at heart, yes. well, you mean it? sometimes in some churches, the boys and girls take their palm branches and we march around the church. So we would sing, we're going to let the congregation, the adults sing, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. And they're going to do all the singing, and we're going to do the marching. And I'm going to lead you. And if you want to do that, you can do that. If you don't want to do that, not a problem. I don't force anybody to do anything they don't want to do. I hated that when I was a kid. Don't make me do that. <laughs> all right? So fall in. We're going to sing Hosanna, loud Hosanna. We got the words up there? There it is. Y'all know that one? Follow me. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sing. Through pillared courts and temple, the lovely anthem rang. You, Jesus, who had blessed the clothes folded to his breast. The children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. From Olivet they followed mid an exalted throng. If not, okay. Our affirmation today comes from 1 Timothy. I'll read the leader part. You'll join me with the people. There is one God, and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all to whom we testify. Join me. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory, 
Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts for our morning prayer. O oh Lord, this morning we paraded with the boys and girls and sang Hosanna, O oh, save now, and praise. The word means both. Lord, we, we do come and need your saving. There are things we try to do on our own power, our own strength, and we, we fail. And we need your help. We need your saving. And we praise you for being our Savior, for being our Lord. And we're grateful that that opportunity to be our Savior and Lord is open not just to us, but to anyone who calls. Lord, we confess to you our faith, that we believe in you, we trust in you, we believe that you did die for our sins and you rose again that we might have everlasting life. And in this week, when we think about the last week of your life, our emotions are mixed as each day unfolds. Lord, walk with us in this holy week. Help us to understand what you went through each day. We thank you for the Bible and for the stories it tells us, these episodes in the life of Jesus. We pray that we would see in the scriptures positive examples and negative examples and learn from both. Our Lord, because we are forgiven, because we have been set free from past guilt, we live victorious lives. Help us to walk in victory. And because we have victorious lives, help us, O oh God, to pray for those who are in need this day. We think of those who are grieving. We think of those who are in hospitals and institutions where they can recover and rehabilitate. We think of those who've just recently been discharged from the hospital and are still recovering. We pray, O oh God, for those who are on hospice, for those who are suffering in body and mind and spirit. And even though the sun is shining this day, there are those who are so depressed and so anxious and so fearful and so lonely. God, you know the needs of the people in this room and in every room. Touch hearts and minds. Renew and restore as you will, O oh God. We pray for those who are looking for jobs, for those who have been dealing with the aftermath of so many storms that have gone across our country. We think of the national, international scene and wars and rumors of war, of poverty and famine, and we are blessed. God, we are grateful for those opportunities when we can be of help. We pray especially for Caden, a boy who's needing a bone marrow transplant. We pray, for God, that that bone marrow transplant would go really well. Lord, there are other prayer requests deep in the hearts of your people. We lift them to you in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. Oh, 
Better now. There it is. Our passage today is Luke chapter 19. But this is an episode in the life of Jesus that is considered a gospel parallel. This appears in all four of the gospels. We have, for example, if you all wanted to look it up, maybe not this moment, but if you wanted to look it up, Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11, and you would find the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. You folks, if you looked it up in Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, you would find the story of Jesus entering Jerusalem. We've got the Luke passage, which is in front of you, and John would be John 12, 12 through 19. So in all four Gospels, we have this episode in the life of Jesus. And what's wonderful about that is that Luke says certain things that John doesn't say. And John says things that Luke doesn't say, and vice versa. And there are certain things that happen in the Bible that only appear in one gospel. That whole story about Jesus being born in Bethlehem, that's just Luke. Doesn't appear in Matthew, doesn't appear in Mark, doesn't appear in John. But it's only Luke. So we look at this as a whole, and so we, we take some time to, yes, I'll look at Luke today, but it doesn't mean I didn't look over at John for a little bit. It doesn't mean maybe I didn't take a peek at Matthew. And so we have the whole of the story because we have some different points of view. So this is Luke's gospel. After he said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come to Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples ahead, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find there a colt, tied that has never been ridden, Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as it had been told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. As he was, came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you ever, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they're hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts against you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave within you one stone on another." because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. (laughs) 
Holy Week is always the most complicated emotional week for me in the whole year. 52 weeks, I'm good. But this one week, on Sunday I'm supposed to be all happy. Jesus is coming to town. This is great. Happiness. We'll do the whole Hosanna with the banner, with the palm branches, and we'll be happy and we'll be welcoming Jesus into town. And, and this is just great and everybody's happy. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. But by the end of the week, the same people who are saying Hosanna are screaming for him to be crucified. And, and there's something that just causes us to have those times where our emotions and spiritually we're, we're just kind of wondering, am I supposed to be happy now or am I supposed to be sad now? And, and, and some of us, even though we know that Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago and he rose from the dead 2,000 years ago. There are some of us who in our own hearts, on our own minds, take Holy Week kind of like, okay, this is the day that Jesus did this. And this is the day that Jesus did this. And then we get to Thursday and we do a Monday Thursday service or a, a, a communion service of some kind. And then on Good Friday, the church is in mourning because Jesus has died for the sins of the world. And then Saturday is kind of a waiting day. And then Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection. So it's, it's a roller coaster. And some of you in your lives have had Holy Week kind of lives. Holy Week experiences, haven't you? There have been times in your life that have been up and wonderful and joyous and happy and everything's just going fine. Thank you very much, Pastor. And then you've had some times that have gone down. Some of them have been kind of, eh, it's neither here nor there. It's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, a Holy Week. It's just things are happening. But then things start to go down. And you've had some of those weeks in your life. And, and Holy Week is always a time of triumph and tragedy. It's, it's a time of cheers and tears. And we have this, it would be so much easier if we just did one. But we have this Sunday to kind of cover the whole week. Cheers and tears. It happens. Now, I want to take a look, and I want you to know something. I, I have had a friend of mine from southern Illinois who worked for a company who organized trips to Israel. And he was one of the staff members who got to go on these trips to Israel. And I said, and how many trips to Israel have you gone on? And he said, I lost track after 15. So I have somebody who has some knowledge. And so when I have a, a question like that, I, I kind of talk to him. So I want to show you, and it helps to give us a little bit of orientation. Okay. Bethany. There it is. Okay. Who remembers what happens in Bethany? Bethany. Mary and Martha were really ticked at Jesus because he didn't show up on time to do something. Raise to raise Lazarus. So Bethany is where Lazarus is raised. Now let's put this in terms of Hayworth, okay? Bethany, think of the, hang on, I wrote it down. I had somebody write it down for me. The Randolph Township Memorial Cemetery. Everybody know where that one's at? Okay, as you go down 50, Old 51 to cross over. That's about two miles from here. So think of Lazarus living or being in the area of the memorial cemetery. Okay? Hayworth is two miles away. Jerusalem is about two miles away from Bethany. There was a time in my life I could run a seven minute mile. I was in the army, I was in shape, it was great. So I could do a two minute, I could do two miles in 14 minutes. Even if we were walking, it wouldn't take us that long to walk from the cemetery into town. If you were doing a 30 minute mile, you'd make it in an hour. And you could probably do it in 15. So this is very close. Bethany is so very close. It's no different than the cemetery being here in uh, where are you at? In Jerusalem. 
Okay, it's very close. Now, the only reason the Bible mentions Bethphage in the little middle there is because we think, some scholars believe, that this is the village that Jesus sends the disciples to. Maybe. And there's some debate among the scholars, and there almost always is. So then, Jesus enters Jerusalem through the Garden of Gethsemane, the Mount of Olives, comes down. Do you see the southern steps, the pilgrim entrance to the... Okay, that's how people get into the temple from, on their pilgrimage for Passover. That's how Jesus is entering. Now, you see some area about where the Last Supper was, kind of, sort of, we think. And these distances are really close. Three quarters of a mile, and, and this is very close. And Jerusalem at the time was eight-tenths of a mile north to south and six-tenths of a mile east to west. I think all of Hayworth would fit in Jerusalem. It's a pretty small area. Okay, now, let's take a look at this. Jesus is a very unique character. And as we look at this, one of the things we need to understand is things have not been going well for Jesus. Kind of. Certainly he's raised Lazarus from the dead. They've had a big dinner party. His feet have been anointed. Things are looking up. But if you have your Bibles with you, the Gospel of John, verse 11, chapter 11, excuse me, page 105 in the back of the book. Verses 53 and 54. Almost down on the very last bottom of the page. Because Jesus has raised Lazarus from the dead, there are people who are starting to believe that he is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. He is the conqueror of death. And the people who are in power are not pleased about it at all. Verse 53 and 54. So from that day on, they planned to put him to death. Jesus, therefore, no longer walked about openly among the Jews, but went from there to a town called Ephraim in the region near the wilderness, and he remained there with the disciples. Turn one page. Chapter 12. Verses 9 and 10. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there at Lazarus' home in Bethany, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priest planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. There's a death threat. There is a death threat on Jesus. For a while he goes into hiding, but there comes a time when he says, it is time to face it. There's a certain amount of courage in the life of Jesus. If somebody's after you and you say, here I am. You want to talk to me? You want a piece of me? I'm here. Jesus could have very easily come into Jerusalem at night. They could have put up their hoods and walked very slumped over and snuck into town. But Jesus decides to ride a donkey, a noble beast in the day, coming in peace, not really wanting any problems. And this courageous man is also a planner. It's already designed, it's already premeditated, pre-planned that we're going to have an animal ready for me. And oh, by the way, we even have a password. The Lord has need of it. And when the time comes, it all starts to happen. Let's go to the next map, please. Okay, so we have the Mount of Olives. You'll see. You'll see the temple steps. Okay, that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Now, let's take a look at it in a photograph. Next, please. Now, do you see the man with the umbrella? 
The white umbrella on the steps? Okay, great. Do you see the stones he's standing on? Those stones were laid during the reign of Herod the Great. And we're looking at the temple steps going in to where the the pilgrims went in. But that hill up at the top, you're looking from the west to the east, that is the Mount of Olives. Okay? Now, let's take a look at it from Jesus' point of view as he's coming into town. This is a picture. You can see the gold dome there. This is the angle and the sense of uh, descent we have Jesus. So if you were with Jesus that day, and Jesus starts looking at the city of Jerusalem, This is what you're looking at. You have the Kindred Valley, the valley going down. Okay, the ancient wall is there. Okay. But what else is happening? Well, let's go to another slide. Ah, you know that phrase where he says, if these disciples stop shouting, even the stones will cry out? This is a cemetery. It's been a cemetery since the reign of King David, like 800 years before Jesus is born, maybe even 900 years before Jesus is born. Everybody who's listening to him knows that he's talking about the tombstones. Those people in the tombs would be the ones that would cry out. They're just not rocks on the ground. And if you don't see the pictures, if you've never been there, if you don't do the research, you're just like, well, I guess some stones are going to just get a voice. This is what we're talking about. You remember from the story of uh, Lazarus, Martha says to Jesus, I know my brother will rise on the last day. Jewish thought is that the resurrection, first Abraham rises in Haran, but then everybody else comes through the Mount of Olives. And so if you're buried in the Mount of Olives, you, you get to go first. Okay? These are have been here for hundreds and thousands of years. And Jesus says, if these people don't get to shout, maybe the dead will. I think that got their attention. So Jesus starts to come into town and he is celebrated. So we see Jesus as being courageous. We see Jesus as being celebrated. People are just happy to see him And they're waving their palm branches. They're taking off their cloaks and putting them down on the ground. Let's see what the next slide is. Yeah. Now today, if you want to respect somebody, you roll out the red carpet. We talk about red carpet events. Hollywood movie stars, political figures. We have a red carpet. You know, this is pretty a big deal. It's a way to show honor. It's a way to show respect. And so the people of Jesus' day... Don't have a red carpet, but they'll take the coat off their back and throw it on the ground and say, hey, my king is coming. The person who I want to be the sovereign of my soul is coming, and I want to welcome him, and I'm going to celebrate him. When you wake up in the morning, is it possible that we could celebrate Jesus coming into our life every single morning? How would you do that? Would you do it with a song? Would you do it with a prayer? Would you do it by reading a scripture? Uh, How do we celebrate Jesus in our lives? It's a challenge. So we have Jesus being courageous, facing a death threat. We have Jesus being celebrated by people who want him to be their king, but not in the way that he wants to be their king. They're looking for a political leader and he is looking to be a spiritual leader and they're disappointed let's go to the next one so there you are having your great time hosanna hosanna throwing your coat on the ground everything is going well and all of a sudden you hear (laughs) and you look and jesus is weeping what in the world just happened jesus the compassionate one jesus being courageous 
Jesus being celebrated, Jesus being compassionate. And he has this compassion over the city that doesn't know who he is. If they would only realize that they could have peace, not just political peace, but internal peace, spiritual peace, and now it's too late for them as he enters the city because he knows what's going to happen. He knows what's going to happen because in 70 AD, the Romans are going to occupy Jerusalem. They're going to lay siege to the city, and they're going to cut Jerusalem off from all of its resources. Okay, let's try it for here in Hayworth. We're going to block 51, old and new, and 136. Whatever food you have in your house right now is what you've got. Whatever water you have right now is what you've got. And they're going to have their supply lines available to them. They're not going to have any problems getting their stuff, but we are going to be cut off. And in Jerusalem, they're cut off and there's no food. There's no resources coming in. And slowly, they die. So hatred, so deep is the hatred of the Romans that they take the temple that has taken 46 years to build and they take it apart stone by stone until there is hardly anything left. Jesus knows what's going to happen to them, and it breaks his heart. So there is such potential, and Jesus weeps over the city of Jerusalem. If only, if only you would hear, if only you would listen, if only you would obey, how much different your life could be. And on this Palm Sunday, we need to celebrate Jesus. We need to remember that Jesus was a man of courage. And maybe there are times in our lives when we need courage. And maybe the example of Jesus can help us. And maybe we could be people of compassion. In this week, so many different things have happened. You've seen them on the news as I have. There's all sorts of storms and violence and mayhem. And how do we, as people of faith, come alongside those who are hurting and show compassion? And maybe we do something that Jesus does. There's an old saying, he talked about a teaching that said, weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. May we be able to be God's people and his witnesses as we celebrate Jesus coming into our lives and into our hearts. And as we celebrate and recognize the compassion of Jesus and ours to others in need. Amen. For communion this day, we're going to sing a song of preparation. Three verses of a song of preparation. Hear, O my Lord, I see thee face to face. I'm going to ask you to stand for that in body or in spirit.
We are open to everyone, our communion table. This isn't a Methodist table, it's not my table, it's Christ's table. And any of you who are here who love Jesus are welcome to come and be part of this. We're on page nine of the hymn book. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, look to us. Help us to look within ourselves. We're told that we should examine ourselves before we take communion. Help us, O oh God, to take this time to identify those things that are not right within us. Maybe in what we say or what we do or what we think. Give us the courage to repent, to change, to be the people you call us to be. As far as the east is from the west, so far do you forgive our sins from us. We are grateful to be free from our sin and our guilt because of all the things you've done for us. Amen. I'm going to invite my helpers to come now. We will be taking communion by intention. The uh, team will be giving you a piece of bread, and there will be a cup for you. I will have um, a, some sealed communion elements here as well. For those of you who would like to have things that are a little bit uh, hermetically sealed. Please come. The table is ready.
367 hours, we'll be back. And we're going to be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And what a difference that makes in our lives. It's made a difference in my life. I believe it made a difference in yours. Live this life this week as though it has. Share the love of Jesus with what you say and what you do. Go in peace. Take some time to greet each other. Thank you.